Level 0. It doesn't begin with heat. It begins with absence. The rain that should have come last week doesn't. The air isn't hot. The soil isn't cracked. But something's missing. And the land knows it before we do. A farmer checks their irrigation chart and frowns. The soil moisture sensor dips just below average. Not dry. Just off. The trees don't rustle as much. The grass recovers slower after footsteps. The sky, though blue, has that slightly baked tint. This is level zero, abnormally dry. Not a drought, but a precursor. It's when weather patterns flirt with dryness. It's the spark before the tinder forms. In some regions, level zero arrives like a polite knock. In others, it's the calm before the long wait. Statistically, it might go away next week. The rain might return. But if it doesn't, you're no longer talking about a delay. You're talking about descent. Level 1. The first cracks appear, not in the earth, but in the routine. Your local water utility issues a soft warning. Nothing drastic, just a suggestion. Avoid watering lawns during peak sunlight. The grass is brittle. The creeks are lower than normal. A few towns implement early restrictions. Rural communities notice wells refilling slower. Welcome to level 1, moderate drought. The shift is visible now, not dramatic, but familiar to anyone who lives close to land. Crops still grow, but yields start to dip. Some farmers irrigate earlier than usual. In wildfire-prone areas, brush begins drying faster than normal. Insurance companies take notice. So do risk analysts. Water pressure drops in old neighborhoods. Lawn care companies cancel weekly visits. Golf courses brown around the edges. It's livable. But this is the stage where systems begin bracing, when drought plans leave the binder and land on someone's desk. Left unchecked, level 1 rarely stays level 1 for long. It either reverses or deepens. Level 2, now it stops being invisible. This is the first time people start using the word drought out loud, not as a warning, but as a reality. This is level 2, severe drought, and it means more than cracked fields. It means stress, biological, economic, infrastructural. Ranches start trucking in hay because pastures no longer feed livestock. Agricultural yields fall noticeably. Corn ears grow stunted. Wheat fields go prematurely gold. Irrigation becomes a balancing act between what's needed and what's allowed. Small streams vanish. Ponds become muddy bowls. Municipalities limit outdoor water use. Farmers file insurance claims. If you're rural, your well might go dry. If you're urban, your water bill suddenly climbs. And fire? It's not just a summer issue anymore. In level 2 droughts, entire regions burn not from lightning, but from sun and stress. Mulching gardens and using drip irrigation instead of sprinklers can reduce water use by up to 60% and keep plants alive longer when restrictions hit. Level 3. Now the ground fights back. Trees drop leaves mid-season to save themselves. Fields are stripped, not harvested. This is level 3, extreme drought, where damage isn't just visible, it's operational. Farmers plow under entire fields, not to harvest, but to kill failing crops and save the soil. Livestock herds are culled. The cost of feed exceeds the value of keeping animals alive. Reservoirs drop so low that boat docks sit in mud. Wildlife crowds dwindling water holes. Birds migrate early, or not at all. Fisheries collapse as oxygen levels plummet. In some U.S. states, water rights lawsuits erupt. Downstream users accuse upstream districts of hoarding. It's not just water scarcity, it's water politics. The ground itself begins to subside, literally sink, in areas where deep aquifers are being overpumped. In parts of California's Central Valley, the land has dropped over 30 feet since the 1920s due to groundwater depletion. Emergency water deliveries begin, but not for comfort, for survival. At this level, avoid watering anything that isn't food. Switch to biodegradable soaps and low-flow fixtures. Wastewater is now a resource. Level 4. The word exceptional shouldn't mean this. This is level 4. Exceptional drought. The highest level on official drought indices. It is where agriculture stops planning and starts bleeding. Fields are left fallow. Crops are abandoned. Water for irrigation is simply not available. City planners enforce rolling water blackouts. Power plants reduce output because the cooling water is too hot. 
or too scarce. Dust storms return to the Midwest, not like the 1930s Dust Bowl, but closer than anyone wants to admit. And in towns that depend on rivers, the taps run dry. You walk into grocery stores and find bottled water aisles empty. In 2018, Cape Town counted down the days to day zero, the day municipal water would shut off. They barely avoided it. In other places, that day has already come. The risk of permanent land degradation or desertification spikes. Even national governments request international aid, and the atmosphere becomes crueler. Dry soil radiates heat back upward, making heat waves hotter, longer, deadlier. It's not just drought. It's a climate feedback loop with no easy off switch. Retrofit your home with low flush toilets and faucet aerators before restrictions get extreme. The cost is low. The savings in a crisis are massive. Level 5. There's no map for this because the lines have moved. This is Level 5. Drought Emergency. Not officially standardized, but used in national disaster frameworks when Level 4 isn't enough. This is when the infrastructure fails, and so does public trust. Entire towns run dry. Water trucks arrive like aid convoys. People line up with buckets, ration cards, and hope. Hospitals triage by water access. Rural clinics shut down. Industry halts because cooling, cleaning, mixing, and producing require water. In parts of Madagascar and Somalia, people have dug five times deeper for water than just 10 years ago and still come up dry. Hunger follows, then migration. Governments declare states of emergency. Military or UN agencies are called to assist. It's not just about thirst. It's about system failure of food, energy, commerce, and basic governance. And for many regions facing long-term shifts in rainfall, this stage isn't temporary. It's becoming seasonal. If you rely on municipal water, invest in a potable-grade water tank and filter system. When trucks stop, you'll have hours of resilience others won't. Level 6. It's not just the rivers that recede now, it's the people. This is when drought displaces. Rural families move into urban slums. Crops die in the field, not from neglect, but from thirst. The air smells like dust and dry leaves. Cracks form in the ground like veins. In some places, this stage has a name, severe drought. But the damage? It's more than severe. It's strategic. Livestock don't just suffer, they vanish. Either sold early or starved late. Feed prices spike. Farmers ration water by field, by row, by hope. And the water that is available, it isn't always clean. Wells run low and draw deeper into older, less filtered aquifers. Hydropower starts to fail. In places like Brazil and California, this has already happened. When reservoirs like Lake Mead drop past their dead pool levels, turbines fall silent, electricity prices soar, and now it's not just food and water, it's power, productivity, and national stability. In 2022, Somalia declared a national emergency, not for war, but for water. The fifth consecutive failed rainy season led to over a million people displaced and a looming famine. This isn't just about brown grass. It's about broken systems, because drought by now isn't just weather. It's pressure, and it squeezes from every direction. Install dual flush toilets and low flow shower heads. During level six, cities may start rationing water by household quota and conservation buys time. Level seven, now even the aquifers betray you. What little water is left comes out of pipes with a warning label. This is the point where water security becomes water anxiety. Level 7 is known by many names. Extreme drought, hydrological drought, deep groundwater crisis. But in plain terms, it's the stage where your taps still run. But only for now. Major reservoirs drop below 20%. Wells are drilled deeper, but the deeper you go, the older the water. In India, Nearly 60% of irrigation relies on groundwater, but levels in some regions drop by 1 to 2 meters every year. In Arizona, homeowners now pay tens of thousands to deepen their private wells, or truck in water entirely. And the water that remains? It's more saline, more toxic, more contested. Legal battles erupt between states, provinces, even neighbors. In 2023, the Colorado River Compact reached crisis point with seven U.S. states fighting over who gets what share of a shrinking resource. Meanwhile, the soil turns to powder. Wind kicks up dry silt into the sky. 
respiratory illness spikes, and if a fire starts, it moves like it owns the land, because it does. At level 7, prioritize drought-resistant landscaping, xeriscaping, and harvest rainwater from gutters. These become critical water buffers during municipal rationing. Level 8. Now nature stops pretending it can recover. You're not just seeing dead crops. You're seeing dead ecosystems. Rivers don't just run dry. They vanish from the map. The Murray-Darling Basin in Australia faced this in 2019, when entire wetlands turned to cracked earth and native fish died by the millions. In Spain, satellite images show the Targus and Duero rivers shrinking into ghost streams. And in Chile's Central Valley, some lakes have been dry for over a decade. At level 8, the ecological drought begins. It's no longer about farming or drinking. It's about extinction. Bird migrations break down. Amphibians vanish. Tree cover collapses. Desertification begins to spread. Not naturally, but violently. In Africa's Sahel, desert has claimed over 60 miles of arable land in some places. China's Gansu and Inner Mongolia provinces are now home to ghost forests, where trees still stand but no longer grow. This stage also weakens carbon sinks. As plants die, they no longer absorb CO2. And worse, dry soil emits more carbon than it stores. So drought isn't just a symptom, it becomes a climate feedback loop. Advocate for soil restoration projects, composting, mulching, and tree planting, stabilize land and reverse small-scale desertification before it spreads. Level 9. Now drought writes laws and breaks them. This stage is no longer local. It crosses borders, cripples trade, and lights the match of political instability. This is agricultural collapse, not theoretical. In 2010, a drought in Russia reduced the wheat harvest by 40%. The Kremlin halted exports. That drove up food prices across the Middle East, which fueled unrest, which became protests, which in Tunisia sparked the Arab Spring, all from a drought. At level 9, food insecurity spreads. Staple crops, maize, wheat, rice, fail in multiple regions simultaneously. This is called multiple breadbasket failure, and it's one of the greatest risks to global food security. The World Bank warns that by 2050, climate-induced droughts could force up to 216 million people to migrate, and in places where there's not enough food, the military steps in. Riots happen, and entire governments fall, but the worst part, even regions with water feel the shock. Because when supply chains break, everyone starves slower, diversify food intake, and support community agriculture. Relying on distant supply chains makes you vulnerable when large-scale crop systems fail. Level 10. Now we leave history and step into modeled futures. Level 10 isn't speculative because it's unlikely. It's speculative because it hasn't fully happened yet. But it's coming. This is permanent drought also called aridification. Not a dry season, not a bad decade, but a shift in climate where wet years simply stop arriving. Regions like the American Southwest, parts of the Mediterranean, and Southern Africa are already entering this transition. In climate models, these zones shift from seasonally dry to semi-arid, permanently. Lake Mead and Lake Powell, two of the largest reservoirs in the U.S., have dropped so low that hydropower output may shut down entirely in coming decades. And this isn't just America. Spain's vineyards are withering. Morocco's dams are shrinking. Mexico City may run out of water entirely by 2030. Some districts already rely on truck deliveries once a week. At this level, desalination becomes the norm. Not luxury, not last resort, but basic survival. Yet desalination is expensive, energy-intensive, and in poorer countries, nearly impossible to scale. Level 10 isn't a drought, it's a redefinition of what is habitable. Monitor your region's annual precipitation trends. If a drought has lasted over 10 years, it may be part of a larger aridification trend. Long-term relocation might become necessary. Level 11. This is when the atmosphere forgets how to rain. Speculative? Yes, but plausible. Under high-emission climate scenarios, this is hyper-aridification, a world where parts of the Earth experience less than 25 millimeters of rain per year, indefinitely. Not because of El Niño or La Niña, but because the global water cycle breaks. In this future, subtropical high-pressure zones expand. Rain belts shift north and south, 
Entire equatorial regions, once rich in biodiversity, dry out into bone. Amazonian rainforests? Scientists warn that with just 20 to 25% deforestation, the Amazon could flip to savanna, drying out in a climate tipping point that would be irreversible. The Sahel in Africa could expand into Central Africa. Australia's interior could fully desertify. California could become more like Baja, Baja more like sand. In this world, countries spend billions not just on water, but on moving populations, entire towns relocated, farmlands abandoned, global water wars are no longer movie scripts. And while this hasn't fully happened yet, the early signs are already visible. In 2024, Chile experienced its 15th consecutive year of drought. In 2023, Spain's water reserves hit 37% capacity, even before summer. At this stage, self-sufficiency is survival. Invest in home filtration, grey water recycling, and modular off-grid systems. They may become your lifeline. Level 12. We leave the world we know. This is planetary drought. It hasn't happened on Earth, but it has happened on Mars. Once, Mars had rivers, lakes, possibly oceans. Evidence of fluvial erosion covers its surface. But then, it lost its atmosphere, and with it, all liquid water, forever. Level 12 is fully speculative. But it teaches us this. Water isn't guaranteed, not even on a planet where it once carved valleys. What if Earth, through unchecked warming and ecosystem collapse, entered a hothouse state where the water cycle slows? What if evaporation outpaces precipitation? What if polar melt shifts jet streams permanently? Models suggest that if the Earth warms beyond 4 to 5 degrees Celsius, some regions might no longer generate rainfall at all, despite having once been fertile. Not desert, not drought, but silence in the air, in the sky, in the soil. Level 12 isn't a forecast, it's a warning, because the absence of water is not just a crisis, it's extinction in slow motion. Stay informed on global climate thresholds and vote, advocate, and act to keep Earth's climate habitable, because there is no emergency plan for level 12. Thanks for watching. See you in the next of the Saster.